Joe, just, you know, you've been talking about what happened in your relationship with Mark and, you know, the violence and, as you were saying, the, the, the kind of abuse. It, it sounds like it was really horrific. Yeah, it was. It wasn't great, to be honest. You know, the that first night when I got the knock at the door and I saw the policeman there and I was, you know, wondering, has somebody reported us again for the shouting? Has somebody been back on the phone saying we've been too loud? I'll be really honest with you. See, when he told me what had happened, I was just so glad that they knew exactly what had happened to him because I laughed in that policeman's face. I was so relieved. And the last thing I wanted was to be a suspect. You know, it was just really such a relief that they knew that there was no guilt because I was glad. I was so glad that I was finally out of that situation. And I cannot tell you how glad I was to be out of that situation. You know, I've tried explaining to people that it wasn't just about a slap here or a, you know, screaming in my face and what have you. It was, he was a bastard. He was an actual bastard. And I don't know why I put up with it for as long as what I did. You know, I've, I still wake up just now feeling anxious and terrified. I'm constantly on edge feeling like there's somebody in the house. And there isn't. There isn't. It's just, I know that, you know, he could be lurking, but he can't be. He's not here now. But I just feel constantly, constantly on edge. Yeah, yeah. You were saying about before about kind of like flashbacks and just that sense of his presence and just that really kind of frightening, terrifying feeling that he's still there, even though that, you know, you know that he's dead. It, it, he's still sort of haunting you, isn't he? Haunting's a good word. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll be haunted by him for a long time if I don't deal with some of this stuff. Yeah. And you were saying that it, it's traumatic. What, what you went through was traumatic. And there's a sense of, you know, trauma and, and kind of being at the other other side of that now but there's still a big impact of that trauma as, as happens when people are traumatized yeah well i went to the doctor you know i wondered if she could give me something to kind of numb things for a couple of weeks when i wasn't sleeping so much and she mentioned a few things i could try you know she talked about you know almost like post-traumatic stress is what she was describing you know um, the part of the reason why my friend said to give you a quick ring and you know the doctor was talking about some ER therapy or something like that and you know I, I, I did google the things she talked about at the time and it sounded sensible but I'm I'm just I'm I'm not sure what to do next yeah. It's, it's yeah I mean I, I think imagine what she's talking about was something called EMDR which is a specific treatment for tra EMDR for trauma and you were saying that you you did see somebody for a couple of sessions but it wasn't so helpful what, what happened there the woman was great actually she was really nice you know there was nothing wrong with her um I just felt like we were talking about the same stuff and going round in circles you know she she didn't have a lot to add to it she seemed to nod and smile a lot but not actually I don't know I don't know the right term for it but she wasn't getting to the point she wasn't getting things out of me and if anything it was just winding me up and making me more anxious right okay I think probably what your GP your doctor was saying is that you know, if we think about this as kind of post-traumatic stress, it's all, you know, that the, the, what you're experiencing is that there are some kind of specific therapies that would really help kind of focus on the trauma and go into the trauma. I mean, that's not an approach. Those approaches, those specific approaches aren't ones that I offer that I'm kind of skilled and trained in. Um, you know, the kind of therapy that I offer is probably a bit more similar to what you've had you know in those couple of sessions is more supportive and uh and, and you know that can be very helpful for people with particular issues but it sounds like for the kind of thing that you're dealing with and that you're wanting to focus on it would be good to have one of those therapies that really kind of goes into the trauma and helps you work through the trauma specifically and there, there are some therapies you know the good news is there's some therapies that have been shown to be really effective for that um is that your sense as well that it would be useful to get into the, 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 the kind of trauma focus more on that side of things yeah well yeah the way you're describing it it does kind of it does sound it sounds on the right line you know um as long as it's kind of direct and to the point you know i don't i don't want to do more of that going into the past and talking about the same things and you know i, I want to just get i want to get straight to the point you know yeah. i want to 
I wish I could just reach in and rip the fucker out sometimes, you know, I just, I just want to, I'm so angry about it, you know, I just want to, I want to numb it, I want to, yeah, get to the point and move past it, if that's the kind of thing that that does. Yeah, well, I think what might be what might be good is what I can do is give you some numbers of people that I know who are able to offer those kind of therapies, and then if you talk to them and explain a bit about what's you know what, what you'd like to work on, and that they can give you kind of an opinion, an informed opinion, and then talk about whether that would be appropriate. And then if you you know if that's not working out, you can always come back to me, and we can always talk more about um you know what would be different options so you can keep on coming back to me uh, if you're not getting anywhere but i think that probably makes sense to me that to try them first because those are kind of specific therapies for the kind of trauma uh that, that you've been talking about and that you've been saying that you want to work on and that it sounds like your your doctor is also suggesting that you should go down that route yeah that that does sound good okay great well maya um, your scores on the depression scale are not coming down as we would like. Your reactions? Um, disappointed. I was kind of like tempted to just write down that things are better, but they're not. Well, thank you for your honesty. It must be very tempting to want to cheat and convince both of us you are feeling better when in fact you're not. I share your disappointment, uh, Maya, by 12 sessions. If this was going to be successful by itself, we probably would have seen some results by now. It is disappointing. I guess that means like trying meds or um, you mentioned the ECT or the magnetic thing. Um, I don't know, I was kind of hoping to avoid it. Understand, we both were. Um, and as you're speaking, I, I get the sense that maybe you're blaming yourself rather than your depression or the limits of therapy. Um, you think that may be true to some extent? Yeah, I definitely blame myself, I guess. Um, I don't know, but you taught me that self blame is part of depression, so. <laughs> right, and you're teaching me that again. And you've worked so hard at this interpersonal therapy, Maya. Um, I assure you it's not a lack of effort on your part, but we know no psychotherapy is a panacea for all, um, and your depression is not responding. And please understand that's a failure of therapy, not you. I, I hope you'll try to bear that in mind. Okay. It's hard. And as you know, it's, it's my obligation, my mission to find something that will help this chronic depression that's really laid you quite low. Um, not to keep on with something where you're not experiencing significant progress. Yeah, and I like, thank you for that and for being honest about it from the beginning. And now it is my honest opinion that it's probably time to transition from therapy alone to therapy plus medication. I know that was not your initial preference, um, but it is my considered opinion. It's probably time to try that. Your take? Um, yeah, I guess that makes sense um but i can still see you right because right yeah it's helped <laughs> um and i do hear the reluctance and the disappointment in your voice i wish it were different um and certainly we will continue to see each other regularly i promise you maya i'm not going anywhere <laughs> Uh, and with your permission, I will consult regularly with my colleague who will be prescribing the antidepressant medication for you. Okay. Uh, but the time is here. Um, so how does that sound that we get started on that consult for you? Yeah, that's good. Um, especially knowing that I can still see you and work with you. Indeed. So that's the combination part of it. 
And we do want to work together. So let me get you now scheduled for the medication consultation and get some releases signed so that we're all communicating and we're all working toward the same end. Okay. All right. 